not sure. Uh, I saw his truck there, so uh, yeah, he's he's still still around. Take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, the Lord of the Lord, the Lord of the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God. Who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star? Grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. We ask this true Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, to live and reign with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and listen to the reading. From the prophet Isaiah, rise up in splendor, Jerusalem, your light has come, the glory of the Lord shines upon you, see darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples, but upon you the Lord shines and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, 
and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters in the arms of your nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Epha, all from Sheba, shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May the rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The kings of Tarshish and the Ares shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor the lives of the poor shall save. The reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles are co heirs members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel, the word of the Lord. Please stand. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We saw his star at his rising, and I've come to do him homage. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, of Judea. In the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is a newborn king of the Jews? 
We saw his star at his rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him, assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people. He inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophets, and you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me a word, that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed from their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. As I said, today is uh, the feast of uh, the solemnity of the Epiphany. Epiphany, which stands for manifestation. We all have been blessed by the light. As I said before, today the Eastern Church is celebrating its Christmas. Because today is their Christmas day. And we are the Latin church. We are also celebrating Christmas, even though we started on 25th of December. So, my dear people of God, there is something worth thanking God that we are celebrating Christmas and the light of Christ has come to all nations. The light of Christ has become universal. It has become Catholic. You know, I always like to start my homily with something a little funny. I don't know if I have told this joke before, but as I always say, if you have heard it from me, laugh again, it is still a treat. I heard about this uh, devout shepherd. He lost his Bible while he was out taking care of uh, a wayward sheep. Three weeks later, one a sheep approached him carrying the Bible in his mouth. He was dumbfounded. He couldn't believe his eyes. And so he took the Bible out of the sheep's mouth and looked up heavenward and exclaimed, it is a miracle. And the sheep 
looked at him and said, Not really. Your name is written inside the cover page. My dear people of God, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, he showed himself to the shepherds. He showed himself to the lowly shepherds and continued to reveal himself, reveal himself as the light of every people, as the light of every time, as the light of every place. And that is why and that is what we are celebrating today. It is a wonderful day for the church and for all believers. And that quotation I gave is from John Paul II, St. John Paul II. I think he, when he was actually preaching in 2002 on the Feast of Epiphany, that our Messiah who was born to you and me. He showed himself in Bethlehem to the shepherds and continues to reveal himself as a light of every nation. And that is why our church has become so Catholic. It has become universal. It's just the Gentiles have received their faith. Those who do not know him, they should know him. It's no longer secret because we are not a secret society. The light of Christ, as a matter of fact, it signifies the presence of life so that wherever, wherever you have light, there you have the presence of life. And wherever you don't have life, there you have the presence of darkness. The same thing applies to the heart. The heart that does not have light is in darkness. And the heart that has life, light has life. When you see that heart, when you see that person, the person is so happy, the person is so joyful, the person is so obedient, the person is so respectful. But when somebody doesn't have light, what happens? He's angry, he's upset, he's disrespectful, he's not obedient, and so on and so forth. Because light goes with values. Light goes with values of life. And that's what Jesus is teaching us. Last time I was preaching, I was the New Year. I was telling each and every one of us what we went through in 2020. And the, the different kinds of uh, conspiracies that we experienced in 2020. Different types of prophecies different kinds of visions to the point that the, the scientists, the scientists were also confused. And even the faith, those people who call themselves people of faith, they were not left out because they were looking for light. They were looking for solution to the problem. And so in 2021, 2021 is we have received the light. We have seen the light because people who really have light in them have given us some light and some life. So we have the vaccine. Vaccine is a sign, is a sign of life that we are going to overcome this situation that we faced in 2020. And so, my dear people of God, 
it's good for us to understand what we are celebrating today. It is the same light, that same light that the three wise men, the Magi, they saw the light and they traveled too far from home to come and adore the light and adore Christ the light. What does that mean? It means that the first and first fundamental thing that inspires the human person to come into the church to worship is that light, the presence of light and the presence of life. It is a light and not because Christ is a light. Since Christ is a light, he even identified himself as a light. When we read, I think, uh, is it John? John chapter 18, verse 10, if I'm not mistaken, when he said, I am the light of the world. So, my dear, the key thing we need to know, the key thing we need to do also, is to follow light, is follow the light. Because once you follow, Jesus even said in the Bible also, that if you follow me, then you will never walk in darkness. If you follow me, you will never walk in darkness. And you will have the light of life. And that's what I meant when I said that if you have light inside you, you have, you have, you'll, be, you'll be fine. You'll be happy. It'll be hard for people to annoy you. It'll be hard to be up, people to upset you. It will not be easy for you to say, I'm sorry. It, it, will be, it will be very difficult for you to be sad. Even when you are sad, you try to uh, become, feel better immediately. And you are not, people cannot lay, you cannot be led astray by people if you have light inside you. And you cannot just follow the darkness. So my dear, what we need to do today is just to ask our good Lord, to continue to show us himself as we come here to worship. Because if you come here to worship, then Jesus is going to dispel the darkness inside you. He's going to dispel the anger. He's going to dispel the evil inside you. He's going to dispel the darkness inside you so that you become the light of the world yourself because he says that you are light of the world he said it also that we all are light but we have to receive because you cannot give what you don't have so my dear love god the major that we are celebrating they went to the light and adored the light they adored jesus and presented the gifts the three gifts that represent the person of christ the gift of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And they all represent the eternity, the eternal kingship of Christ Jesus, the eternal priesthood of Christ, and the eternity that Jesus is God, the divinity of Christ Jesus. And we all are members of Christ's body. And that is why oftentimes I, I call all of us saints, when I'm doing the Mass, I look at you. We are all saints in the making. So let's ask God today to give us the grace to appreciate what we are celebrating. That our Savior has been born. Our Savior who showed himself in Bethlehem to the lowly shepherd and continues to reveal himself to all of us as a light of the world. And he also wants each one of us to follow him, follow him so that we don't walk in the darkness, so that we will be, we will have the light of life. The light of life in our hearts, the light of life in our relationship, the light of life in our, in our families, the light of life 
wherever we find ourselves, even in, the, in our places of work. Let us stand before the creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty. Visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. Consubstantial with the Father. Through all things we are made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. And believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayer of the faithful. As we begin a new year, let us bring our prayers and needs to our Heavenly Father with uh, confidence that the church may effectively proclaim to the world the divinity of Christ and the special role of our Blessed Mother. We pray to the Lord that the church leaders may be strengthened by God's grace as they face the challenges of the new year, we pray to the Lord. For the leaders of the nation, we seek equality and peace for all people as they enact just laws. We pray to the Lord. The prayers of the mother of God may strengthen all mothers to follow her example of welcoming new life despite fear, doubts, and uncertainty. We pray to the Lord. And the lonely and the neglected may be encouraged by our prayers and concern for them. We pray to the Lord. Those in purgatory may dwell in Christ's abundant love for eternity. We pray to the Lord. May not add their own personal intentions. Father, as we begin this new year, open our hearts and minds the many blessings you offer and give us joy in following your son Jesus Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever Amen Please. Blessed are you, Lord, of all creation, through your goodness of this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made become a bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, he would come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord of all creation, through your goodness of this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it become our spiritual drink. For oh God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer with humble and contrite heart. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from all my sins.
spirit that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, your mighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his church. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now, not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and received Jesus Christ. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for all the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so, to the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gives you pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will pour out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Daniel our Archbishop, George the Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, and merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him waiting in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Why don't we have sing? Amen. My dear people of God, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days by the help of your mercy. May we always free from sin and save from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. By the mingling of this body and blood of Christ, bring eternal life to all who receive it. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and pass your peace. But Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life into the world by your holy body and blood. Free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In a few announcements. For the Feast of the Epiphany, there is traditional blessing dedicating your home in the nature of the three kings. Blessed Epiphany chalk kits will be available after all masses. Each family is encouraged to take one home and follow the devotion. We invite you to second Sunday solemn chanted vespers for the feast of the Holy Family on, on Sunday, January the 10th at 7 p.m. Please see uh, our YouTube link to view last month's Vespers and invite your family and friends. The Holy League Holy Hour for Men's Men is Wednesday, January the 13th at 5.30 a.m. There will be an hour of Eucharistic adoration and confession followed by Mass at 6.30 a.m. Ladies are asked to wait until 6.15 a.m. before entering the church. We are asking for your help to protect and restore some of the items in our church, including a protective glass and the stained glass windows to guard against damaging storms and vandalism. Our various altarway are in need of restoration and repair, including 12 altar candlesticks, the tabernacle and monstrance, High altar cross and the communion rail gates, completion of the renovation of our 100-year-old uh, pipe organ. Sponsorships are still available and can be made in memory or in honor of family and friends. For more information and to view these items, please visit the parish website under the page giving and sponsorship. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit, the Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Go for the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is him, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Let's sing together. Nobody has the monopoly of it. <coughs>
singing a happy new year